All right. Uh, thank you very much indeed, our correspondent uh, Dele Omayeni, covering the presidential candidate of the Labour Party. Well, when you speak about security, I mean, uh, getting up this morning and moving around, you get different reports, uh, correspondents in all parts of the country, getting feedback and the information almost on the go. Uh, one of such was uh, Kogi State, uh, not too far from here in Abuja, where uh, several reports did come through about some activity from the state uh, concerning some local government areas, senatorial districts. And now if you look at uh, some scenario coming through from the senatorial candidate of uh, uh, the PDP, Natasha Kwoti, now this was one of the scenes that played out in some of the areas uh, where voting was supposed to happen. And uh, if I remember, if I get that right, that I think there was a response from the government saying that uh, they had to send, what, people for excavation purposes. Mm. We'll just need to get some clarity on that one at the moment. So uh, if we do have Natasha Kwoti, she is on the ballot. Uh, so she wasn't exactly happy concerning what played out. So uh, do we have her? Uh, let's just get to hear from her concerning what transpired in her locality. Good evening, Natasha. Can you hear us today? I can hear you, Chamberlain. Good evening. Good evening, okay. Nigerians. We did see some visuals, images circulating about you, uh, narrating what transpired. So tell us, what happened? Okay, so uh, it's just uh, coming in frozen at the moment, but we will sort that out and uh, bring her response to you. We'll get as many response from all of those who are in the field in whatever way possible so just uh keep it we'll, we'll sort that out and get her back on and i also do remember that um one of the pressers with the efcc with the INEC chair uh some cso's had okay well there you go that is uh, i believe some of these scenarios that early happened in the earlier in the day today so uh we'll get her back and ensure that she gives us her account of what transpired. Well, there was that call, that concern, uh, when they did ask the INEC chair and security agencies, particularly the IGP, protect the few number. I think the number dropped for females on the banner. We'll, we'll come to that. I wonder why that is the case. But we do have her back, uh, Natasha Poti. She's back on the line. So please go ahead and tell us what transpired today for you. Well, it started um, quite peacefully. And then there about 12 o'clock, um, we experienced a lot of attacks from the APC thugs. They carried machetes, guns, those that carried guns, the war the military uniform, but you can tell that they were not the genuine military. And then they collected ballot papers, seized the beavers, destroyed a lot. And um, at that point, they even tried to abduct an INEC official from a police near me. So in total, in uh, my local government, that is okay local government and okay local government, hundreds of polling units have been destroyed because pretty much we are leading everywhere, everywhere we were leading. And then wherever they found that we are leading extremely, they had to destroy the ballot boxes. So what happened is at some instance, the, um, the soldiers moved swiftly and like, like all these gentlemen there and intercepted them requesting for their identification card, you know, to show that they are actually members of the force. And to their surprise, they had none. So all these men you, you are seeing on the floor, they actually about 30 of them, they were arrested. So they, um, can you hear me, sorry? There are about 30 of them arrested. Only eight are being displayed there because they were arrested in badges and they were moved to the, uh, to the local jail command. They were fake policemen. They were all fake policemen wearing the military uniform, carrying guns, machine guns, and they were the ones terrorizing voters. Now, I can tell you that now, uh, I already made a complaint to INEC that hundreds of polling units were destroyed across the, the local government. In addition, the Ganaja axis of Ajakota local government never voted. Many polling units there, polling units that have thousands of voters, of registered voters were disenfranchised because the INEC officials did not, um, was not on site and the EOs switched off their phones. We could not reach the EOs and um, so no material. So there was no voting in Ghana Axis. Uh, petitions have been written 
uh, the polling it against road petitions in that regard. And we are hoping that INEC will allow elections to be conducted in these places because it is extremely wrong to disenfranchise thousands of people. I mean, you should have seen the mood earlier on in the day. People came out in their thousands. It was so peaceful. People were organized. Everything was coordinated until this mishap started around 12 o'clock. So that's the situation now. Oh, I've oh, yeah. been some deaths. Um, we saw instances where there's some thugs in uniforms tried to shoot at the police officers, and then there was a retaliation, of course. And then, unfortunately, we have some uh, of our uh, um, what's it called? Constituents dead. Some people lost their lives today because the soldiers had to defend um, their lives. So there was exchange of of, of, of gunshots. That's really disheartening. Oh, to and hear. one more thing. Uh, well, I don't know if you can confirm to us, Natasha, if you can hear me, uh, about there were reports that uh, initially some areas were dug up um, around your local government. Thing, can you and hear about me? One into my community. Yabelo tried by the uh, Nigerian army, and they told they told Yabelo not to. He had no right to leave his his local government and enter another local government. He was driving into my community and he was stopped. And I believe at that point, your channel's reporter, in conjunction with TVC, because they were together, they tried to get a coverage of it because it was a, a scene. The governor stepped out of his car, challenging the forces that he needed to drive to my community. And they were like, no, you have to stay back at your side. We, we understand you're a governor, but you cannot cross for the local government borders. And he wasn't happy about that, but they successfully sent him away. Your reporter was on ground uh, at that point. I don't know if he sent you the visuals. Okay, um, that's uh, certainly something to note, and we'll certainly look out for that. But I wanted to confirm, yes. I mean, there were stories that made the round earlier today that trenches were dug up around your local government area, making it difficult for INEC officials to access. Can you confirm that story to us? Yes, five roads leading to my community uh, were cut off. Um, it started, the excavation started two days ago. Um, yes, it started, the exercise started about three nights ago. We woke up to realize three um, roads were excavated and then they continued the next day. So I tell you, um, that was done purposely to disenfranchise us and to prevent INEC from exercising a free and fair election. And the hardship, even though the governor issued a statement that his reason for excavating five roads around my community, thereby trapping me, is to curb insecurity. And that is such a lame excuse, uh, pardon me, it's very lame. Because it, it, I can't begin to tell you the amount of hardship the people in my community and neighboring communities had to face because they were cut off. A market, traders could not access the market spaces, farmers could move, children could not go to schools, um, commuters had to go the another, had to create an extra route. Some, some even had to go through Edo State because I'm sharing boundary with Ipilo. They had to go through a journey that would have just taken 10 minutes, took one hour. So a lot of activities crumbled in the past two days. But what happened is, at the time, I had to step up. I have some um, construction equipment in my site and my home here in the village. So we took the payloader and we went around all of these sites and we started covering them one after the other. We covered the last at about 4.30 a.m. this morning. And that is why INEC officers were able to deploy their materials timely today using the route that we uh, covered. But I'd like to let Nigerian know, Nigerians know that these roads are right, were built, some of them were constructed 40 years ago. Two of them actually federal highways. This particular road behind me was also cut off because it leads to Ikare. It connects my community to Ikare. So we had to just cover it up. My concern now is when the rain starts coming, mind you, we only filled the sand back, but when the rains fall, those roads will be unmutterable. Like they will be in deplorable situation. And I do hope that the governor, considering the fact that he uh, excavated this road to curb insecurity that he will, immediately after the elections, he will deploy resources to fix these roads. Um, if there's any other question, I'm willing to answer.
Yeah, just quickly, I would like to know what the status is right now. You say you're heading, I, I heard you whispering that you're going to the collation center. Um, yes. Where, it does mean then that voting was able to successfully happen in some polling units so collation can take place. Is that yes. right? Yes, we, you know, um, we just have to make do with what we have. So um, we do, of all the other polling units, that uh, elections were held successfully, we won. So we just have to, but we're also hearing that there's going to be a lot of intimidation and harassment of INEC officers. Mind you, I told you that um, and some two INEC officers were almost were abducted actually, like at the verge of being abducted. They were dragged, they were saved when they were already pushed in the vehicles, in the thugs vehicles. So we're just trying to um, deploy ourselves, like move uh, whatever, personnel we have over there to guide to guide and protect our votes and the of INEC officials that are there uh, because we don't want anything to go wrong we don't want any form of inducement or harassment so if at the end of the day INEC decides to announce the results based on the polling units that were successful I know that I'm going to emerge victorious and but at the same time I don't want any last minute game because this is it like until the results are finally announced. Believe me, there are people that are going in to make some mischievous changes, and we're trying to avoid that. All right, then. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your experience with us today. Uh, Mrs. Oh, Natasha wow. Akwoti Udwaha, who's the PDP senatorial candidate. We also implore you to stay safe.